Welcome, 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 everyone, and happy Thursday. It is noon Eastern time here uh, right next to the Atlantic in the booming metropolis known as Ambler, Pennsylvania, right outside of Philadelphia. And because it's Thursday at noon, you know what that means. It is time for Talent Experience Live, your weekly look into all things recruiting, talent acquisition, talent management, and human resources as a whole. I am your host, Devin Foster, um, and this program is proudly brought to you by the good folks here at Phenom, whose purpose is, stop me if you've heard this before, to help a billion people find the right work. That is why we put on this program on a weekly basis. It is why we create so many wonderful blogs, so many webinars. It is why we are hosting our annual uh, conference coming up here in April, the 23rd through the 25th, known as I Am Phenom. So if you haven't registered yet, please go ahead and do so. You can find that at phenom.com or iamphenom.com. It is a jam-packed three-day event full of thought leadership, uh, innovative technology sessions, as well as some user sessions as well if you are currently using the Phenom platform And you can really sharpen your skills and head back to work in May uh, with the world being your oyster. You will know how to find all the candidates to upskill everyone and everything in between. And the way that you'll do that is through our Intelligent Talent Experience platform, which helps candidates find the right roles faster. Uh, employees evolve in their current roles and beyond. Recruiters achieve next level productivity and efficiency and managers Through all of that, they get better data and insights through automation and analytics. Um, And of course, all of the Phenom Intelligent Talent Experience platform is powered by super slick artificial intelligence. So while you are on the internet right now, I want you to change browsers, unless of course you're listening on Spotify, hop on to Google, type in phenom.com and see what we're all about. Maybe request a demo if you are so inclined and at the bare minimum, Register for I Am Phenom because you will not want to miss that event. Well, now that the bills are paid, we can get into the meat and potatoes of today's episode. We are really talking about skills uh, from a different lens. I think we've talked about skills and skills ontologies and what the Phenom platform can do for you if you're looking to be a skills forward organization, but we haven't really got into what that means for future talent. And today we're not going to talk as much about the technology. We are going to talk about what impact being skills forward can have to your organization. And specifically, we're going to talk about them being beyond degrees. I think for many folks growing up, uh, they were always taught or told, whether it be by their parents or by their institutions and schools that they went through, that you finish school, then you go to college, you get a college degree, then you get a good job, then you go, the, essentially the Kanye West discography, right? Late registration, college dropout, graduation. I'm kidding. Um, we are now in a, a world where there's been a, a lot of I don't want to call it backlash towards universities and college, but people are beginning to weigh the, pro- weigh the pros and cons of how expensive it is and then the job that you get after school. And today we're not going to necessarily talk about the benefits of college itself, but what skills uh, you can leverage today to maybe find that dream job. And if college is necessary for it, again, I enjoyed my my college career probably a little bit too much, did a little bit of a victory lap there at the end. But what skills are doing towards organizations and how you can still find fantastic talent, maybe without some of the requirements that we once had. So I have a very special guest today. I am joined by Mike DeMarco, product marketing manager here at Phenom, who recently just wrote a blog around skills and the paper ceiling and everything in between. So without any further hesitation, let's bring Mike onto the program. Dude. How are you? Doing good, man. (laughs) My goodness. Dude. Thank you so much for bringing me on here. It's been like a month and a week (laughs) and you're brave enough to bring this dude onto your show. And I am so stoked to be here today to talk about skills. I'm happy to have you, dude. And I'm happy to have you on at at such a quick rate, right? Uh, You have been here 
you know, for a month, you come yeah. from a, a different industry, right? You're Completely not completely different industry, human resources, yeah. but skills are something that I know you're passionate about. So Without a doubt. before we get into maybe some of the more deep thought leadership around skills, sure. I want to ask you, you've been here a month. What skills are you working on? What have you learned already? <laughs> That's a fantastic <laughs> question, dude, because you know, the organization that I was with before coming to Phenom was more of that mid-sized company that was yeah. experiencing a lot of growth. Yeah. And so for me, I thought I was mean at cross-functional collaboration. <laughs> like I thought that was my jam because the company was small. I knew the stakeholders. I was able to function well within the company and to get things done strategically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now I'm a part of a massive team working cross-functionally. Like you know this in our own department, in our own room. There's multiple teams running, mm -hmm. multiple folks that you have to align with, know what's going on. And then not to mention, once you go upstairs to the second floor, there's a whole sales team and executives up there yeah. that are grinding it out mm -hmm. every day. And so I'm feeling like, man, I have an opportunity here to take mm -hmm. the foundation that I have as far as being able to connect and prioritize, mm -hmm. but then to grow it. And right now it's a little uncomfortable. I think that that's the beauty of skills yeah. is that you see the value in them and then they get uncomfortable and then you get better. <laughs> and so like, I'm definitely looking forward to seeing like, where, where does this end up in three months down the road? Like, yeah. and I think that that is really one of the biggest things that like, I want to focus on today is where can people start to see their value in their own skill sets and yes. their own abilities, and then to quickly identify them and to leverage them. Yeah, no, I, I it's funny that you bring up, uh, you know, a collaboration across teams because we're going to talk about college today a little bit, but nice. everyone has seen nice. the memes and the stories of folks who, uh, have group projects, right? And <laughs> one person holds up their end of the bargain. Another person may not. One person might not do anything, but they present the entire material, right? Learning to work in teams is a skill that is oftentimes tried to be taught in, in college. For sure. But when you get into the workforce, you have to in order to, to make a living. Yeah. Um, so I, I love that that is a skill that you are, are currently working on and one that you had confidence in before, but are continuing to sharpen. Yeah. I want to ask you, the blog. Yeah, it's, man. it's fantastic. It just went live today. Oh, if dude, you haven't gotten the you, chance, thank you. of course, of course, if you haven't gotten the chance to, to read it, phenom.com backslash blog, you'll find it. You're right at the top. Um, <laughs> what was the inspiration behind this? Uh, you mentioned you've only been here for, you know, around a month. Yeah. Did you come in and say, this is the, the blog, this is the story that I want to tackle yeah. right around, or was there something that motivated you to, to move in this direction and, and try and educate folks on it? Yeah, it was definitely a little bit of two things, two big things played into it. So I don't know if you know this, but like we drop some banger case studies and yeah. we get to talk to some amazing people and we drop this awesome article and interview with LaVon Monroe over at HP. Mm -hmm. And she was sharing her story about not getting a college degree, yeah. moving up and finding her way into the workforce and the challenges that she had. And I related so closely yeah. to her story. And so for me choosing this topic and having the opportunity to dive in and to study it and to learn it, to start to see like, what are the industry trends? Where are people going with it? Yeah. Was really exciting for me to be able to like to broaden that out. But man, it was built so much on personal experience and my own story. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's, that's awesome. I, I, have watched the Levon clip multiple times, yeah. the Levon clips. Um, one thing that really stands out to me about that, that profile on her, on our, on our website, you can find that on phenom.com backslash blogs as well. Plug God over here. Always plug oh, the dude. website. Um, but no, it's, it, it's one thing that jumped out at me was the struggles that she had when yep. it came to finding her next role. Exactly. She'd go through the interview process. She was qualified. And then there was knockout questions, right? That, removed her from them. And they're not necessarily from the applicant tracking system or from the uh, application itself. Right. It was in the interview process where it's, do you have a degree or do you not? Yep. And she mentioned, you know, she just stopped applying to jobs. She started building a network, which from a phenom perspective, career sites and applications are, are our bread and butter. Um, yeah. it, this is the house that career sites <laughs> built that we sit in right now. Um, best in class, but it, for someone at her stature, for someone at her level, it's you know uh, disheartening to hear that she abandoned that approach because she felt that she wasn't getting her, her fair shake. And in the blog, you mentioned this concept of 
paper ceilings. Yeah. Which I hadn't heard before. I, I've heard of, you know, glass floors, glass ceilings. The paper ceiling is is a little bit different to me. Yeah. So I want to ask you, is this a new concept, a new terminology? And is it something that we've been dealing with for a very long time or is it nuanced? Yeah. No, I definitely think we've been dealing with it for a long period of time. I think that you could see that in the way that it's difficult to find the right talent and to get the right talent into those jobs that you need. Mm -hmm. um, but I believe in like the last couple of years, it's really picked up so much steam with people championing the movement towards skills and thinking about how to reevaluate a person's worth, value, and, and employment experience in order to leverage that to be effective within an organization. Makes sense. Do you think... The paper ceiling is something that needs to be torn down, to rip to shreds, to <laughs> toss into the, the the shredder itself. Or is it something that maybe needs to be there? And for some instances, we should build a, a quote unquote ladder around it. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I definitely think that there's always going to be degrees, like especially when we talk about this here at Phenom, like within like the different work zones. So yeah. like your work zone fours, your work zones fives, more of those knowledge worker base roles. Um, Think about your doctors, your lawyers, you know, those types of professions are always going to need to be certified. I want yeah. my doctor to go to med <laughs> school, man. You know, like I, I go see the good people over at Penn Medicine and I want to know that like mm -hmm. these guys are sharp. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah I, I think that makes sense. I, I relate it to um, blue collar roles, right? There That's are another big thing, dude. Yeah. There are blue collar roles where they may not require a degree, but they require certifications right yeah. i look at my my father as an example he's a an, an over the road truck driver does long hauls from here to mississippi to california and everywhere in between yeah. um he didn't learn how to drive on a go-kart mike right. he he has his cdl and things like that so there are certain requirements i think that that need to be in place but when we talk about it from i think just a, a general standpoint um both agreeing that certifications and degrees are necessary where do you think the line is is drawn or created i guess in that sense yeah i i mean i think the line and where you asked me the question do i think it's being torn down yeah. or is it going to be torn down and it is it's already being torn down especially between 2023 and 2024 like when i was researching for this john dude it's like pushing like over 45 percent of companies are considering removing the degree requirement mm -hmm. for entry level roles in order to build bigger talent yeah. pools or um not just organizations or companies dude but like even states like i was reading up on like new jersey pa dropping the degree requirement in order to get into entry level government jobs i think it has amazing impact as far as getting people into work helping high volume hiring situations like where you could get somebody in the door and to mm -hmm. help them but i think the biggest advantage here is like where you see people who have the long tenure Mm -hmm. and who may be in that managerial role who don't have that degree and that they get knocked out because of those questions. Yeah. And, and it's, this is an opportunity for those folks to be able to move up in their career properly. Yeah. It's, it's almost ironic a little bit because we as Americans love the underdog story, love right? It. How many times do they do a profile on a big wig CEO, self-made startup, college dropout, whatever it may be, the, the system wasn't working for them. Yeah. And then they, they build these fantastic companies only to then in some cases, turn around and have that requirement, that paper ceiling to get in the doors of their right. own organization. The other aspect that I want to focus on there, uh, specifically to what you mentioned of managerial roles, right? Yeah. Requiring maybe a, a master's or that next step in order to get that bump to executive C level, whatever it may be. Um, that's dedication. That's yeah. time that it's going to require. And for sure, we all know after the pandemic, the lines have kind of been blurred nine right. to fives in theory, they exist right They're They're there, but I, I got to slack this morning at seven o'clock in the morning that, that I answer to right. Technology has blurred those lines. And in turn, I think they're they're blurring the lines of requirements as well, especially when we look at the commitment of what a decree requires. Right. And and you brought up certificates before, and, and I think that they're starting to get a lot more love mm -hmm. as they should be, because folks are looking to get like to get that time of value back, right? Like to go from like you mentioned your dad. In six months, he was able to get a CDL license yeah. and then to start making an income. Yeah. 
and so many degrees take such a long time. They're a huge time commitment. I think that's one of the things like when we were preparing for this yeah. that we both really aligned on, which was like college is like a level of commitment. Like you are showing that you start something, yeah. that you finish it, that you have that grit and that determination to mm -hmm. drive. And it's a valuable education, but you're also getting that in the workforce. You're yeah. also getting that in life. Mm -hmm. No, I mean, and, and people have extenuating circumstances as yeah. well, right? I, I, we talked about, um, or you mentioned, you know, folks at a, a managerial position, they're probably not 18 year olds, 19 year olds, no. right? The, the, they have families, they have yeah. people that they care for. They have pets, they have mortgages that they need to make rent that has to be paid. The idea of being able to sacrifice what three or four hours a day to attend classes, to, to get a degree or whatever that may look at. It's some, simply not feasible for some folks. And you can't like you and I, we're, I th we're both in our mid third. Yes. At mm -hmm. this point. Yeah. Right. Like the idea of the audience doesn't, they don't need to know all this. They don't need to know this. They're like 20 something, <laughs> but being in our mid thirties though, like we're halfway through like yeah. our career in mm -hmm. some sense. And if you don't have that degree and you're in that managerial role, how are you going to move forward? Yeah. Like I have good friends like back at home who opted not to do the traditional route, mm -hmm. who got high school, got their high school diplomas, entered right into the workforce. They're managing large teams they are doing dynamic things. They would be of value to any organization. But like when I have that heart to heart conversation with my friend of like, Hey dude, like we could do some stuff here. Yeah. Right. There's mm -hmm. things that you could do. You could update your LinkedIn profile. You could get those endorsements going. Yeah. You could highlight your current skills that you're using. You could show off your portfolio and the things that you're investing in in real time to put that value out there in front of your network. Mm -hmm. But when I talk to them, that fear of not having that degree is it's just it's a non-starter for yeah. folks. Mm -hmm. No, it's it's intimidating, right? Because it's been ingrained in us for so long. And I have uh, friends who who didn't attend college who have done very well yeah. for themselves. But I also have uh, you know friends who attended college. And then didn't end up using their degrees, right? Right. Have started their, you know, worked in their own fishing business. They don't teach you anything about fishing when right. you're, you're in no, college. No, no, no. Without a doubt, mm -hmm. man. Without a doubt. Um. No, it, it's it's interesting, and uh, I know you have some stats. I want to uh, bring those up around the talent shortage, right? It's something that, at this point, is never seemed to go away in our industry. We're always going to talk about the war on talent, um, whether they come up with a fancy new name for it or not. But there certainly is, I think, a, a tightening of the belt around organizations where there are roles that they are struggling for. Right? How can a skills-based approach be applicable to, to maybe finding talent to, to help their organization as a whole? Yeah, no, that's a great question. And so like, the latest census data showed from 2022 that only 37 percent of folks over the age of 25 have bachelor's yeah. degrees mm -hmm. so like that number right there is alarming to me because if you were to just look at it the other way that means that there's 63 percent of folks who are over the age of 25 which mm -hmm. that's us mm -hmm. do not have that basic requirement in yeah. order to get them qualified mm -hmm. to move forward so you are limiting yourself greatly yep. and i think that there's there's a lot of things that folks could do to, in order to start moving around and to um to really leverage skills based in their own formal practice yes. mm -hmm. um i think companies can really just start to think about approaching candidates differently yeah. like one of the things that i was taken back by is like maybe start to consider somebody's professional tenure how long have they been with a company? Mm -hmm. Where have they advanced? What are the things that they're doing actively? Going back to that certificate, so start weighing those in. Yeah, really consider them mm -hmm. as being like a viable, you know, indicator for you to know, like, hey, man, this is somebody who's investing in their career. They're growing. They're trying to stay up to date. And and I think more so than ever, organizations are going to need to invest in tools to maintain these these skills ontologies. Yeah. I think that you're going to need to have tools like AI and automation to really help you to get a full scope of what you have going on in your organization. Absolutely. And if you have that idea of what skills you need, right, conversations become a lot easier, right? You're no longer searching for someone with a specific job title. Let's say you're looking for somebody in that managerial sure. role that you had mentioned um, and you need somebody with Adobe skills, right? Yep. Um, you're not limited to folks who have gone to school for art degrees or, right. you know, creative degrees. Now it's an initial conversation with a candidate who has applied. 
where it's, hey, how you know fluent are you in leveraging artificial intelligence or generative AI to create content? It's an easier conversation. And if the skills are there, you can continue to and I think that you And I think that you really hit on something, which is that it helps talent acquisition teams be able to go after talent with laser precision. And so what that does as far as a benefit for you is that that's cutting down time to hire, yeah. which if you are hiring for multiple roles at a given time, like that, that's your biggest enemy. Yeah. And so the more that you could cut that back and actually have clear focus, and then it creates better experiences throughout the whole interview process. Mm -hmm. And even once you push that candidate into like a higher mode and then they join your organization, you're still using skills to evaluate them where they are on, on one-on-ones on, yeah. on, um, performance reviews yeah. and all those things are, are, they could be notated and kept, but if you keep all that information in silos and in different places, it's not going to be trackable. It's not going to actually be able to benefit you. So organizations, I would say like, start looking at your data and finding ways that you can organize it and leverage it. Yeah. You're not going to know the individual on your sales development team that has a passion for marketing. Right? right, because you don't have that documented anywhere, and especially uh, we did the annual review uh, process uh, episode a few weeks ago. Right. If you don't know that about you know your individuals, how are you going to create that longevity that you mentioned right. and that tenure that folks are looking for if they feel like they're stuck in that silo and stuck in that particular area? For sure, and it just doesn't help talent acquisition teams as well, but it also yeah. helps managers be able to know who they're qualifying and to be able to hire for the skills that they actually need to provide the job function. Yeah. Absolutely. not dance around tertiary requirements. Yes. And I'm gonna, I'll address the, the elephant in the room. And this is just, just my opinion here. Um, if you are beginning to look at skills and degree does not necessarily become a requirement, you aren't going to have to supplement folks paying back their student loans. Mike, oh gonna... my God, dude, I got about <laughs> 50,000 reasons right now. <laughs> and I specifically chose the cheapest <laughs> private school in the nation. Um, as to, and I'm still paying back student loans, but when we talk about these, these things and we see it online all the time right. around, you know, folks who are looking for entry level jobs fresh out of college, yep. they can't supplement their, you know, student loans and live at the same time. I'm not saying that this is a solution. There is a much greater problem here behind this, but as an organization who is focused on getting talent in the door, if you can find a similar skill set with and this is another thing, that same level of maturity that I mm -hmm. think folks have in college, right? Um, you are able to, to maybe find someone at a more cost effective thing because we all know budgets are tight, right? Every day we see the layoffs, we, we see that online um, and organizations do what they have to do to stay afloat. But when you reach some sort of point, you have to say, all right, we can't get XYZ person for XYZ income because they have to pay back $50,000 right. worth of student loans. Yeah. And so do we want to talk about the cost effective benefits That's, of using skills? You have the floor, my friend. It's, it's all <laughs> you, you. you know what I mean? Like, yeah. like it's commonly known, right? That yeah. it's better to hire within than to go look outside. Yes. It's always going to cost you more time, more money, more effort in order to find that candidate. Mm -hmm. And then when you get somebody that looks really, really great on paper, Odds are the price tag is probably going to go skyrocket. Mm -hmm. Now, once you have your skills ontology nailed down, once you understand what you're looking for in your current roles and in your organizations, now you're able to go back and see in your team who, who has those skills, who wants to grow into those skills. And then you start to build out this real holistic, healthy organization. Yeah, absolutely. And it creates something that you're looking for in building a skill, cross-functionality collaboration. But dude, I think at the end of the day, everybody's looking for opportunity. And I think that that's what's so special about this movement towards skills. Yeah. Because it really is an opportunity where both people, both sides of the coin are going to win on this one. Yes. That's my bet. Yeah. My bet is that with skills and the movement towards skills, both sides of the coin are going to win. Yeah. Candidates are going to be able to feel empowered and they're going to be able to leverage their abilities in a more effective way. Mm -hmm. Organizations are going to save time, save costs on churn by hiring the right fit candidate and by nailing that down. Yeah, absolutely. And you get to uh, sculpt the individual that you want to be in your business if you keep them there long term. Without a doubt. And I think that there's so much undervalued around somebody who's willing to grow, yeah. somebody mm -hmm. who's willing to learn. 
Yeah. You know, like I can think back to my own life and like, I was a person who really benefited from mentors. Mm -hmm. So many people came into my life and it took time to yeah. slow down and invest in me to make sure that I was getting to the next level. Yeah. And so with skills and with having that and getting that planning, I mean, yeah. And, and you can find out where you need to improve as an individual Dude. from a tangible aspect. Exactly. Right? I, I mean, so much gets lost in like, have you ever had a conversation with your, with your boss or with somebody, mm -hmm. you know, and they were like, Hey, like, let's start working on X, Y, and Z. And then you, you don't track it. And yeah. then you don't see that growth. Mm -hmm. I mean, as an employee, like you lose out on that benefit of going back to the top of this conversation, cross-functional collaboration, yeah. right? With having these systems in place with being able to properly track and manage your data and using skills as like that guiding light and that like centerfold yeah. for everything. Mm -hmm. I mean, now you're able to see yourself progress. You're able yeah. to see yourself grow. Also, you're able to see the things that maybe you're not that great at and that could get you moving into a positive direction even quicker. Yeah. I, I think we at, at times in our industry, it's a, a bit of a joke, but the hiring manager that says, I really want that go-getter. I really want that. <laughs> we, they write it in job descriptions as well. A self-starter, right? A right. real, you know, who, whatever it may be. Um, that's not a skill right? Like a go-getter is not a skill, but there are skills that you can find Dude. with folks that would get you a quote unquote go-getter, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, and I mean, like, and I think that that's one of the limiting factors with resumes, with cover letters, with legacy forms of validating candidates yeah. is that you miss out on this extra layer as well that I think that social networks and networking really help build out for people, yeah. which is character. Who are you? What's it like to work with you? Are you going to show up on time? Do you finish your projects? You know? Yeah. <laughs> cover letters are a whole nother. We, if we could get Cliff Jerkowitz <laughs> on here to talk about cover, he hates them. Oh, um, really? Yeah. I'm not a fan of cover letters either. Although one thing I will say, big fan of thank you notes when it comes to the thank you notes are huge, man. So Did you ever big. get a thank you note? Did you ever get one? I've written a lot, but I've gotten them. They make you feel so good, dude. Yeah. They, I will. I, I'm not high enough up to get a thank you note, Mike, but one oh, day I'm dude, hoping to get one. Well, <laughs> keep we'll a look see. out in your mailbox. There, bud. Keep <laughs> um, a look out, dude. No, they, I think they're, they're great. And, and like that touches back to the human aspect, which although we're talking about technology, we're talking about skills, we're talking about all of these big brain ideas. Yeah. We're getting down to the nitty gritty of who is the human that you want to hire, right? The degree Maybe it is required in some instances. I don't think anyone disagrees, yeah. right? But at the end of the day, as an organization, you want to hire a good human. And you're not going to find that in a cover letter. No. Or you're not going to find that necessarily in a resume at times. It's about meeting people, having the conversations, and the skills that they have and their willingness to learn more. Yes. Right? Without a doubt. Did you check out Skills Day, dude? I <laughs> I, no, please tell me more. What is this? Oh skills man, day? dude, Skills Day was this awesome event that Phenom threw on, which walked through yeah. skills in its entirety. Mm -hmm. I highly recommend that you check it out. All right. <laughs> but at the very top of it, dude, like yeah. Mahi laid out this great vision, though, mm -hmm. as far as like the advent of AI and what does that actually mean? Copilots are coming. Yeah. They're going to help us to be way more effective and efficient. Mm -hmm. But what does that do when they start covering up those manual tactical tasks? That means that those soft people skills start to shine even more and mm -hmm. show. And so I, I, this is another thing. I think that soft skills are going to continue to rise yeah. as far as being level of importance, things that employers are going to start thinking about and qualifying. Yeah. I mean, I think it, it, it goes without saying that, that folks with, with soft skills, in a lot of cases, their careers advance. And, and you may be like, well, how, how did that, we talk about the, yeah. the CEOs, the underdog story who, who, you know, tied up their bootstraps and, and created their own company. They didn't do that because they were just hard nosed and focused on right. things. Steve jobs, I think is a, a fantastic example yeah. of, he might've been treacherous in some of the stories of early on in Apple. However, He'd go out on stage and have the soft skills to present the next iPhone, whatever it may be, and won people over, right? Um, oh even though gosh, he might yeah. not have had the technolo technological savvy to, to build it himself. Um, but that's th that's my opinion. Yeah. Um, it sounds like it's similar to your opinion as well. Yeah, man. Um, Mike, I want to ask you, 
we've done a lot of abstract talking here sure. back and forth we've tossed around a bunch of ideas the word john was used for the first time in the history was of it TXM. the first time yeah that, <laughs> and you got it from a kid from jersey yeah. not even a native philadelphian <laughs> by the way if you want to learn what john means come to i am I on please um and Devin, you're leading them. that breakout session yes, that is that is my session um it's just called john's uh but nonetheless mike i want to ask you what can we give you know our audience today who, who yeah. may have tuned in how can they get started on skills and i don't want you to say go out and buy phenom because realistically we know that that takes a bit of time is there an approach in maybe interviews or in tactics that they can leverage today to be skills forward maybe before they have the technology and skills ontology that they require from an organization yeah like totally so like if, if you are still investing those in those tools and exploring their those tools i think that there are things and we touched on them dude during this conversation that i and and we're just going to reiterate on them i think that there's two things for for candidates to do that they can really lean into your network start yeah. making connections reaching out to people like this is something like small challenge that i try to do for myself mm -hmm. every week i just try to connect with 10 new people yeah. build out that network invest in focusing on the areas that you want to get into i'm a product marketer so i'm connected with product marketers yeah. and other people mm -hmm. in my industry of where i want to go and also to focus on where you are currently you highlight the certificates, the things that you're doing in the immediate and in the near term, and to really, really highlight those things. And I think from organizational standpoint, we touched on it, man. Consider hiring somebody with, with a long tenure and maybe with no degree yep. who's advanced and has moved up to that managerial role that mm -hmm. could be ready to move up because they have the skills and the abilities. Consider certificates, like really, really consider certificates as a valid form of validating somebody's skill set. Yeah. and using them and then also ask candidates to demonstrate and to share clear examples of current projects that's one of the things that i did through my interview process and mm -hmm. i thought it was a really really great challenge because it gave me the opportunity to reflect on the things that i was good at the things that i've accomplished in the areas mm -hmm. that i need to grow mm -hmm. in as well and so i think those three things are really really um huge for organizations to start considering today just yeah. today take a small step i want to stress one thing that you said there at the end which was consider having candidates share projects they're currently working on because i see oftentimes in in my realm of my network i see the bashing of organizations that say hey come come up with four ideas for a product launch or whatever right. and organizations kind of leverage it as how can we get free work here right from somebody <laughs> how can we get the idea machine going um so it's it's something that they're currently working on and that opens up the opportunity for a candidate to showcase passion exactly right, to showcase what they really want to do i know that there's the old cliche of if you love your job you never work a day in your life right so if you allow the opportunity for candidates to say hey i'm super passionate about video editing right i'm in sales right now but this is what i've worked on do you think it would be a good fit and do it within your own organization as well to see what is there I think that's a, the perfect last point, which is like, use your organization as a sandbox yeah, to absolutely. grow. Yeah, you can, you can find folks within your organization to fill needs currently. It's cheaper um, and it revitalizes em employees, right? They get to kind of uh, uh, create their own role. I spoke with Becky Feldman uh, weeks ago about this, but the idea of kind of gigs or creating your own role within an organization is going to benefit the organization as a whole, but it's also going to benefit you as the employee or the candidate because you have found your, you know, your place in the same, yeah. right? Your, your exact spot. Mike, this has been an awesome conversation. Dude. I know you said I had a great last point, but I want to give you the opportunity. Anything we missed today, anything you want the audience at home to, to leave with before we sign off? Dude, skills are going to be the way that everybody wins. I think all boats rise with high tide, man. And this is a great movement. And the tides are getting higher because of global warming. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I, I, that's a fantastic point is that if we are lifting everyone up, we are all going to succeed. Without at the a end doubt. Of the day. Um, Mike, this has been awesome. Uh, to the audience at home, if you missed any of today's episode, feel free uh, to watch the replay here on uh, LinkedIn, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter. I'm not going to ever call it X, even though I work <laughs> in social media, um, as well as the uh, podcast should be out on Apple Music and Spotify shortly. But in the meantime, I hope everyone has a safe, 
Wow, I struggled with that one. Happy and healthy weekend, and we will see you next week on Leap Day. Only happens once oh every gosh. four years, so get excited about that one. Bonus day for everyone. Uh, but we'll see you soon. Thanks so much.